Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be learning about central angles and inscribed angles which, which are both angles that are commonly found with circles. First let's talk about a central angle. The vertex of the angle is on the center of the circle, hence why it's called a central angle. And the relationship to the intercepted arc, that's the arc that um, it crosses on the circle, that is going to be that they are equal to one another. So for example, if this central angle is, let's say, 85 degrees, the arc that it intercepts, the one that looks across from it, is also 85. Now an inscribed angle, the vertex is on the circle, and the relationship to the intercepted arc is that it is half the arc. Okay, the angle is always half of the arc. So let's say, for instance, that angle ACB in this picture is 40 degrees. That would mean that this arc is 80. That means that the inscribed angle is half of that intercepted arc. We'll also see some questions in this video about inscribed quadrilaterals. So an inscribed quadrilateral is a quadrilateral, so a four-sided shape, inside of a circle where all of the angles are inscribed angles, and therefore they're half the measure of their intercepted arcs. The opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are, they are going to be supplementary to one another. So looking at this picture here, A and C are two opposite angles and they are supplementary, that means they add up to 180 degrees. Angle B and angle D are also opposite angles, and that means they're also supplementary and add up to 180 as well. All right, let's take a look at some sample questions. Some of these are going to start off very simple, just getting us used to recognizing if it's a central angle or inscribed. So for number one, it asks for solve for x. Well, we're looking at a central angle here of 42 degrees. That's equal to the arc, so our arc x is 42 degrees. In number two, this is an inscribed angle. That's half the measure of the intercepted arc. So half of 50 degrees is going to be 25 degrees. So again, notice the difference between where the vertex of the angle is located. That tells you what you need to do in terms of the rule. All right, number three, we are given the inscribed angle of 47. Remember, that's half of the arc. So now we're looking to find the arc. That means we basically need to double 47, and that's going to give us an answer of 94 degrees. Now, number four looks a little bit different. So it gives us x, that's what we're looking for, um, and x is going to be half of whatever this arc is, but we just have to do a little extra step to figure out the measure of that arc since there's nothing written there. So notice in the picture how this line segment goes through the center of the circle, and that means it's a diameter. A diameter always splits a circle in half, so that tells me that the top half of this circle has to be 180 degrees, since a whole circle is 360. And that would mean over here that this is going to be 80 degrees. So when I take 80 degrees divided by two, I get 40 degrees as our answer for X. Number five, we're looking to solve for X, which is an inscribed angle, but they give us a central angle. Well, remember the central angle is equal to the arc, so that tells me that this arc is 58, and the inscribed angle is half of that, so 58 divided by 2, and we're going to get 29. So in this case, the central angle and the inscribed angle basically are intercepting the same exact arc. Number 6 has no numbers whatsoever, we're just asked to solve for x. But we have to remember what we talked about before, which is that diameters give us more information. So basically, the diameter splits that circle in half. I know that this is 180 degrees, so this must be half of it, or 90 degrees. Okay. If you have trouble seeing the intercepted arc, by the way, you could always grab a highlighter and enlarge the pieces that form that angle. And the intercepted arc is everything that's basically within that angle. 
So you can see that that gives us that semicircle or 180 degrees there. All right, for number seven, we're now looking at an inscribed quadrilateral. So in seven, if the measure of angle A is 88 degrees, we can see that that's marked in our picture here, we're asked to find the measure of angle BCD. So notice, I'll highlight similar to that last question, angle BCD is going to basically be the intercepted arc from that inscribed angle. So an inscribed angle is always half of the arc. So I know that this is going to be 176 degrees. To find the measure of angle BAD, I'm going to go in with my highlighter again, but in a different color here. Notice that that's the rest of the circle, right? So if I have everything that's in the blue highlighter to be 176, and a whole circle adds up to 360, what's left here in the pink highlighter really has to be 360 minus 176, which is 184 degrees. To find the measure of angle C, I'm gonna take my highlighter again. Notice that C is an inscribed angle. Look at the pink arc that it intercepts, so it has to be half of that, so 92 degrees. Now notice our initial angle measurement of 88 and our final answer of 92, those two numbers add up to 180. They are supplementary to one another. Based on the rule we talked about previously that in an inscribed quadrilateral, the opposite angles are supplementary. All right, and let's take a look at our last question. In circle O, chords AC and BD intersect at E which statement must be true? So one key thing to look for here in these problems is that we're looking at the word must. It has to be true. We can't just go based on what it looks like in the picture. So A, C, and B, D, choice A. I have no reason to believe these chords are congruent to one another. In fact, they don't even look congruent to one another. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off A. All right, B, D, E is congruent to E, B. That looks like, if we're assuming this picture is drawn to scale anyway, that looks like it's a possibility, but I don't have any mathematical reason to back that up, but I'll leave that in the running for a second. Choice C says that angle D is congruent to angle C. Well, if we look in the picture, angle D and angle C are both inscribed angles. And we know the rule that inscribed angles are half of their intercepted arcs. So let's look at the arc that D intercepts. And you can see that it's arc AB. So angle D has to be half of arc AB. All right, now let's examine angle C. Look at that inscribed angle. If we look at it, we can see it's also intercepting the same exact arc of AB. So its measure is also going to be half of AB. So using our circle rules, C definitely has to be true. I now have a mathematical reason, in fact, to verify that these two angles must be congruent to one another. And for our last choice, by the way, these two triangles definitely do not look congruent to each other. Um, but I, again, similar to B, um, or A for that matter, I have no actual way to verify that. So the answer to this problem is definitely choice C. Hopefully this video helped you understand a little bit more about central and inscribed angles. You can check out other videos in this playlist to learn more about different circle theorems. Thanks for watching.